The color prohibit tool is used to judge protrusions and misalignments of a target by specifying the prohibited area. The matching rate is indicated from 0 to 100, where 100 indicates that there are no misalignments or protrusions, which would be a good part. The matching rate then decreases as the protruded or misaligned area increases. This can be shown in the example below with the spool of wire. You can see in the good example, no wire is protruding into the two different color prohibit windows. But on the right hand side, wire is protruding into that right window, and this would be a no good part. Let's go through another example. I'm going to use this color prohibit simulator file to walk through step by step how to set up a color prohibit tool and how it's used. In my example, I want to verify that my orange label is correctly placed in the center of my white card. I want to make sure it's not misaligned in any direction, so up, down, side to side, or at an angle. Let's jump into the sensor settings. Because I already have a master image saved, I can jump to step three, my tool settings. I'm going to add a tool, go to my extra two tab, and select color prohibit. You'll notice it gives me this red box on my image. I can keep this as a rectangle, I could change it to a circle, or I could have it be the entire field of view if I wanted to prohibit a color throughout this entire area. In my case though, I'm just going to leave it as a rectangle and I'm going to make it about this size because I want to make sure that my orange label is not misaligned in any direction. However, I do want to mask out the center because this would be considered the correct location. So I'm just going to add a mask here. So now if my color goes outside of this blue into any of this red zone, that would be considered a bad part. So the next step is to extract the color that you want to prohibit. In my case, that is the orange label. Uh, you can click on your image to select pixels. You'll notice them highlight green. That is just to visually show you what color is being selected. I can use this plus button to make minor adjustments. I can use the minus to narrow in the color range. And I, if you want to exclude specific pixels, you can click on the image and exclude them. I want to select basically this entire label, like so, and I'll hit OK here. The last thing is the threshold and sensitivity adjustment. So here, your default threshold for the color prohibit tool is 95%. That is because this is supposed to be a pretty sensitive tool to be able to catch minor misalignments. Then you also have your sensitivity, which by default is on high. You can change that to low sensitivity if you want your program to allow for maybe minor misalignments or um, just to be a little bit less sensitive, I'll show you the difference between the two in just a bit. But I'm going to keep it on high sensitivity for now. And at this point, my tool is ready and I could complete my program and put this into run. However, I do want to jump into the extended functions quick to show the advanced color extraction settings. So here, you can specify the color that you want to prohibit by the hue saturation and brightness. You can either type in the exact values that you want to prohibit, or you can use the graph to expand or narrow down that color region. This might be helpful if it is difficult to click on the color in your master image, or if you have a very specific range that you want to prohibit. But because mine was easily selectable from the master image, I'm just going to keep this as is and hit OK. So now I'm ready to complete my program and test out how my tool would work. So I'm going to go into Operation Simulation. And you'll see that I have some pre-saved images in this program. So as I click on these images, it will apply the tool that we just set up to these images and I can see how it would judge. So this first one, you can see there is a minor misalignment on the right hand side and a little bit on the bottom. And I get a matching rate of 0%, and this is considered a bad part. 
Now remember, I am on high sensitivity, so this is able to catch these really minor misalignments, which can be helpful for certain applications. As it continues to protrude even more, you can see I have a stable program that detects this as a bad part. As it's protruding in any direction, it's able to detect it. And then finally, when my label does fit in my window and it's not protruding at all, I get a matching rate of 100% and this is a good part. So again, remember this is high sensitivity. I'm going to now show you what low sensitivity would look like. So I'll close out of there and go back to my sensor settings. Go to step three and edit my tool. And I'll change this to low sensitivity. So now I'm going to jump right back into operation simulation and see how it now judges these same exact images on low sensitivity. So you can see here what used to be a bad part with a matching rate of zero now has a matching rate of 97% and this is still considered an okay part. So if you want to allow for these minor misalignments, low sensitivity might be a better option. You can see as it continues to protrude out, I'm now getting a no good part and my matching rate continues to drop. So you can kind of see the difference between the high and low sensitivity, just how that matching rate compares. Depending on your application, that will determine which sensitivity you want to use. So I hope this video helped explain how the color prohibit tool is used and how to set it up. But if you have any additional questions, please give my tech team a call at 888-CANS-OPTION-2 for tech support. Thanks and have a great day.